Welcome back. How beneficial are subtitles to students who are learning the language? Are they a crutch for students that hinders learning? Or is it a boost for students to comprehend and retain new language skills? Let's explore these questions in today's video. As well, I want to give you three solid tips to use media at the core of future lesson activities. My name is Marcella Cooper, and I am excited to share with you my insights, my experiences, and practical strategies that have helped me to become a more productive and effective teacher. If you're a teacher who's interested in improving your teaching methods, gaining perspectives on different ways of teaching, and reflecting on what impacts your teaching practice, you're in the right place. If you find the ideas in this video interesting and helpful, please hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon if you want to be notified for future videos with contents just like this. Let's get started. English language media has become a trending resource. I know I've often used TED Talks, news clips, and even videos as a vehicle to achieve the language objectives that I've set. The exciting thing is that there's research to back up the validity of this practice. In 2011, researchers explored the impact of primary school children from a range of European countries watching films in a foreign language they were studying. They found that when they tested their listening and reading comprehension, there was a positive correlation between students who improved in those skills and those exposed to the films. In fact, the study suggested that undubbed TV programs should be more available to children because the benefits far outweigh the effort required. Another study in 2012, 16 educational systems participated in a first European survey on language competences, which examined the impact of watching videos in the target language. 16 educational systems were tested on the listening, reading and writing skills the study found that the learners benefited from exposure to the media as evidenced by their test scores. As teachers, we all know the potential power for learning that media can hold, but it seems that students perceive it as well. A 2017 study showed that students saw media like films and video clips as useful for developing and improving communication skills. This study essentially explores the role that subtitles have in reducing the student's cognitive load. When students are watching a movie clip, for example, there's a lot going on. They're trying to understand what the characters are trying to say. They're matching it up with what they're seeing in the video. They're trying to put together the meaning of both of those things put together in the context of the video clip. Subtitles simply help students focus more on just the meaning. And by helping them to better comprehend what's happening in the video clip, that allows the video clip to become more comprehensible input. And that is the key to helping students improve their language acquisition skills. The input that they receive, whether it be from reading something, watching something, listening to something, has to be comprehensible. I encourage you to read the whole article. I've included the link in the description box below. The study strongly recommends that media be a core resource in any language acquisition program, not only because it is comprehensible input, but also because it's a lot more engaging, a little bit more relaxed for students, and that will also benefit students' learning. Let me know what you think about the study in the comments below. Here are three different ways that you could use media in the classroom, whether you're in the classroom teaching or teaching remotely. So my first strategy is basically just an adaptation of think pair share. So usually in a classroom, I would give students a simple question or maybe give them a text to read. I suggest giving them a media clip with subtitles as the core of the activity. After students have watched that, they independently think about how they would respond to that, either with a general response or perhaps a question that you've specifically asked them to answer about the video. They take these notes independently. I always encourage my students to just simply do point form notes. It's, it's their thoughts. However they want to record it is fine. Then I would get students to get into pairs and using the notes that they've already created independently, have a discussion with their partner about what they thought about the media clip. 
After that, you can have students get into small groups or you can just move to a class discussion where students have thought about the clip by themselves. They've discussed that clip with a partner. They've maybe discussed it in even a small group and now they're coming together as a class discussion. Hopefully, because of the subtitles, because the media clip has been comprehensible input and because they've had a lot of time to think and discuss the things that they want to say, there will be rich class discussion. The other way that you can use media with subtitles as the core of one of your lessons is perhaps providing an activity where students are required to quote the source. So this can be done as a written assignment. It can be done in the think, pair, share activity that I just mentioned. But basically, when students are responding to the video, instead of simply voicing their opinion, they would pull a direct quote from the video. And the subtitles really help here because not only does it help the student to confirm that that is what they've heard, but it also helps the student with their grammatical accuracy. They're copying down the quote in the way that it was actually said as confirmed by the subtitles that they've read. This is also useful if you're trying to focus on a specific grammar point or a specific language feature. For example, in my class, my students often struggle with idiomatic language. And so I might provide them with a clip that provides rich use of idioms. It can be as simple as create a list of all the idioms that were used in this video clip. A little bit more advanced, I might ask them to evaluate the effectiveness of that idiom or perhaps provide an explanation for why that idiom was used and what does that add to the dialogue. A third strategy you can use strays a little bit away from the use of subtitles, but it's still related. And that is the use of transcripts. I encourage you to take a look at the transcripts that are offered with any video that you might show. For example, in my class, usually with the senior students, I use a lot of TED Talks and they come with the transcripts for that video. And so it's really helpful for when students are trying to look for a particular spot, they're trying to look for a particular quote, perhaps they're doing the quote exercise that I just mentioned, or they're doing a think pair share and they wanna really support their response. It's helpful for students instead of going back and forth in the actual video, which may be a little difficult for them, if they had the transcript in front of them, they can simply scan the transcript for the particular quote that they want, or they can scan the transcript so they know exactly where to come back to in the video to watch again. Do you use subtitles when you teach in the classroom? Or have you used subtitles as a language learner yourself? Comment below. I'd love to know what you think. If you found this video interesting and helpful, please hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe to be notified in the future for more content just like this. You can check out my blog where I've posted more insights and practical strategies for you. The link is in the description box below. I've also included the link for the study below, as I've mentioned before. Let me know if you wanna see more videos based on published studies just like this. I hope the tips that I've provided for you here today are useful for you, whether you're teaching in the classroom or teaching remotely. I'll see you in the next video.